What she really liked was to sit on the bed. Very informal. These were all people who were probably going to die. Patrick Jeffson was Diana's private secretary. Cambridge, the Royal Navy. Off and on, his ancestors had served the royal family for hundreds of years. He was a monarchist, eager to please, perfectly cut out for the royal court. Just knowing that she was needed, that what she was doing was worthwhile, gave her a great sense of fulfillment, I think. Because a lot of the time she felt excluded, real or imagined, from the royal mainstream and from the kind of happy family life that she had wanted for herself. When people are dying, they're much more open, more vulnerable, much more real than other people. And I appreciated that. And I love being with people. So after a day of working in wards like this, we take her back to the palace, where I knew there was nobody waiting to welcome her or say, how did it go? Or, well done. So increasingly, this sort of work became more and more important to her. Going to work for the prince and the princess in the late 1980s meant becoming part of an organization that had as its number one priority keeping quiet about the fact that this was a marriage in name only. That's your no separation. With you and the child? Sort of once every three weeks. And then it fizzled out about seven years ago, six years ago. The number one priority was to maintain what turned out to be a lie. But the trouble was being asked to maintain that facade distanced us from the true principles of decent behavior, of monarchy, the cover-up had to be damaging for the crown itself. I remember at the time, there was a mixture of relief because we no longer had to pretend. And we no longer had to maintain that fiction. But at the same time, we were always conscious that there was a big, silent, rather threatening presence that told us, certainly told me, that the princess wasn't really wanted anymore. Everything changed after we separated. Life became very difficult then for me. People's agendas changed overnight. I was a problem. I was a liability. How are we going to deal with her? It became a condition of your patriotism that you must therefore support the Prince of Wales. The belief that if we were loyal monarchists, we had to be on his side. Well, I'm sorry. As a loyal monarchist, my loyalty was to the principles of, of the British crown. And I saw royal virtues embodied in her more than in him. But I think the real damage was done by those who tried to marginalize her or in more recent years, airbrushed Diana out of royal history. They saw that their man's path to the crown would be a great deal easier if he were not competing for popularity with his ex-wife. 
her last few months didn't give me the impression that she knew where she was going or how she was going to get there or who she was going to go with. A lot of the things that I admired about the monarchy for me died with the Princess of Wales and more than that with the way in which she was treated before she died. That idea of the monarchy has died for me. The idea that respect should be given unthinkingly or out of blind loyalty has gone. People's emotions, people's hopes and dreams, a fairy story had come to an end. <laughs>